Hi everyone, Sneemaster here. I mostly do Star Citizen videos, but every so often I find some indie games that I enjoy and feel like showing everyone. These are games that are not well known normally, or just simply fun to play, so I hope you enjoy them. The game I'm reviewing today is called Craft the World, published by Black Maple Games, but developed by Decovier Entertainment. They make lots of other small games. It's a small side view fantasy building game, similar to Terraria or Minecraft, but you lead a group of dwarves from world to world. The game price is normally pretty cheap to buy as well. You tell the dwarves where to dig or build or what to fight. You click on the blocks or creatures you want them to mine or attack. You can build some objects directly, but other objects you need the dwarves to build with appropriate workshops. You can also cast spells in the world to affect blocks, monsters, or your own dwarves, such as fireball spells or portals. Your goal is to keep the dwarves alive and find the portal hidden in each level to get to the next world. You can either play the campaign or play sandbox gameplay. You can also choose the difficulty and how you unlock technology, either through a tech tree or by randomly finding scrolls. You start with a single dwarf without any gear and have to find or build gear to survive. As you build things or kill monsters, then you get XP. When you get enough XP, you'll get another dwarf. Each dwarf you get takes that much more XP to get the next one. If a dwarf dies, a new replacement will respawn after a few minutes, but the new dwarf won't have any skills that the old one did, so it helps to keep your dwarves alive. There are different world types such as forest, desert, ice world, etc. Each world type has its own monsters and animals. The temperate worlds have sheep or wild boars. Deserts have scorpions and roadrunners. Ice worlds have yetis and furry boars. There are also hidden dungeons scattered in each world with traps, monsters, and treasures. The climate makes a difference in each world though. So for example, desert worlds don't have much ice or water, things like that. You also have to watch out for things like tornadoes or flooding and or snowstorms. Watch out for nighttime. That's when the zombies and skeletons come out. Also, once a month in game time is when a big wave of baddies will come out through a red portal. So you have to defend against that. Underground, you can find floating beholder monsters, weird centipedes, shadow beasts, giant statues, and dragons. Goblins also exist in every world that like to invade your home and steal your things. To fight those monsters, you can equip weapons and armor for your dwarves. Equipment can be made from wood, stone, steel, silver, gold, or mithril. You can also build traps and defenses to defend against monsters. You build workshops, kitchens, barns, alchemy rooms, and other things for dwarves to make or manage things. Clicking on an item in the build menu will show you the recipe for it, if you found it already. The AI for the dwarves is decent, although they do sometimes get stuck behind things. You can also block certain areas from your dwarves so that they don't go there. Luckily, you can take manual control of a dwarf if necessary. The dwarves have funny reactions and expressions to various things such as falling down, being bored, or fighting things. Each dwarf also has their own skills. Some are better at mining, or woodcutting, or fighting, or fishing, or so on. You can find skill books to help the dwarves get new skills or improve the existing ones. Dwarves using their skills will improve over time too, but you can build training machines for combat skills. You have to make sure your dwarves have enough food to eat, beds to sleep in, and proper shelter. Their home must have a totem which will protect it from rats or ghosts. To make sure the totem works, you have to have walls or doors around your home. If the totem is unhappy, then dwarves won't heal well or might not even be able to sleep. An unhappy totem, under 50% happiness, won't protect against rats or ghosts. Rats come in and steal your food. Ghosts can sometimes steal stuff from your stockpile. Decorations for the home makes your totem happier and also helps your dwarves sleep better, which will help them heal up quicker. You can change the materials for walls or backgrounds, or add furniture, windows, lights, or other things to improve happiness, even statues. Better food and more variations for the food makes your dwarves happy too. The side view of the game is well done. You can scroll around the map as needed and there's also a mini map view too. Left click to select an item for your dwarves to manipulate. Left click again to deselect. You can also select multiple blocks at the same time. Dwarves will automatically attempt to do the job without you telling each one individually. The bottom right of the screen has buttons to select objects to build or to equip your dwarves. You can also click on a dwarf to manage the dwarf directly if you need to. There are DLCs for the game that add new features, like pets, or female dwarves, or even a multiplayer mode. The game has still been getting a few more updates over time, and is quite polished now. It's a great game, although it sometimes has a few bugs. It's a real time sink though, as you won't notice how much time has passed once you start playing. It really sucks you in. It's fun if you enjoy games about building, or exploring places, or strategy. I also love the menu music too. Combat and everything is in real time. Alright, so that's it for the brief review of Craft the World. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoy the game too. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. 
Don't forget to use my referral code if you decide to jump into Star Citizen, and you'll get 5,000 in-game credits. Here's a big thank you to my current patrons. I have a Patreon going for $3 a month. All patrons will have their names listed at the end of my videos, and I'll make some exclusive videos for members as well. Okay, catch you all next time.